Oh, really putting me on the spot here. Why is practice between standard and expert? It's like you try the game, Please choose then you realize you're not very level. good at it, you practice it, and then you move on to expert. I don't know. It's just a weird ordering. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are hopping into the wonderful LucasArts classic known as Loom. Now, LucasArts is known for making a lot of really classic adventure games, and Loom is going to be, I was going to say no different, but it's a little different. So Loom, Loom, there it is. Loom is one of these LucasArts adventure games that you may or may not have heard of. It's interestingly one that kind of fell through the cracks. So LucasArts is known for games like Dave the Tentacle, Maniac Mansion, Monkey's Island, Full Throttle, Indiana Jones. Um, and all of those games are renowned and people know about them and so on. Loom was one of the earliest point-and-click adventure games that really had this sort of, uh, you you know, no stuck, no death philosophy, where uh, it's kind of like how modern Telltale games are nowadays, where there's really no Hi, way to totally get stuck. Um, I think I'm being woken up by a sparkle here. I guess I'm this cloaked guy. Elders want to talk to me, something like that. Anyway, this game kind of fell through the cracks uh, for LucasArts, and it's a little different from the, the traditional adventure games that they do, where normally for LucasArts games, you have this sort of, like, verb verb action thing where you click on things and you choose an action like kick or take or give or punch something like that for this game it's all about musical segments so here's my guy here i'm dressing in these stylish white robes actually head to toe like i'm even wearing gloves i wonder what do i look like under this i must be like a total albino because i'm getting no sun at all um i i don't want to get too far before i finish my opening preamble here but anyway long story short we're going to get a musical staff, and that staff will, uh, you know, initiate spells. But in order to initiate spells, we have to play four musical notes in a certain order. And here's something really, really cool. You can get a spell like die, like as if you want to dye something a certain color. Not dies and kill, but die. And like, let's say the notes are A, B, C, D. Well, then if you play those in reverse, D, C, B, A, you would actually bleach something, which is the opposite of die, which is really cool. And there's other spells that we'll learn, like terror, which I've read is C, E, E, C. And that one, you can't play it differently back and forth. It's the same both ways. Therefore, it there's only one way to cast that spell. So this is going to be a very interesting, slightly atypical LucasArts adventure game. And let's go and see what the elders wanted with little old Jay here. So I'm uh, sauntering. I don't know where I am. I'm like on an island of rocks here. But we're going to go find the elders and figure out what it is that they actually wanted with me. Okay, here we go. It's really, really making me walk here. And it looks like there's a party going on. It is clearly Saturday night because all the clubs are bumping. Oh, actually, it's just uh, campfires. Those look far more impressive from a distance. Let's hop into the village here and see what's what. Um, I wonder which tent we can go in. There's probably only like one or two. Usually in these games, it's pretty restrictive. That looks like the Elder's Tent. Let's see if we can find my tent first, just out of curiosity. For curiosity's sake. This looks like my humble abode. What is this? It is gold. Take the gold. Don't, don't, don't these people ever clean up after themselves? No, they just leave their riches lying around on the ground. Wow, if you walked into someone's house and there was just a pile of money just sitting there, I wouldn't be sort of waxing intellectual about it. I would be taking it. I, I guess I, I, I guess I just admitted to being a straight up thief. <laughs> so, all right, let's. He's he's clearly not interested in gold. He's motivated by motivated by things more than money. This is a true um, artiste here so let's go see what the elders wanted nothing wrong with wandering into a creepy tent like this with oh pillars does not seem like you could fit these within a tent but we're just gonna go with it they seem to be violating the laws of physics oh this tent got huge what kind of tent is this oh my god they got stained i've never seen stained glass window in a tent maybe i've been like poor man camping the whole time but i've never seen a stained glass window in a tent what is this what is this this big, big green sheet. A tapestry. There's the long tapestry. I don't remember it looking so old and frayed. Okay. The threads describe the creation oh, he's still of the going. World. 
and the passing of the two shadows. Uh-huh. Looks like just a green blanket to me. What is this? This blue one over here. Let's see. Anything? Uh, nothing seems to do anything. Oh, here we go. Here's more of the tapestry. This one's blue. The pattern shows the entire history of the weavers. I keep thinking he's done talking, and then he kind of keeps talking. It's actually annoying. <laughs> do you ever have that? Is there ever, like, someone... Uh, do you know anyone who, like, they start talking, and they leave, like, long gaps between the end of their sentences where you think they're done talking? It's, like, almost something out of, like, a Ricky Gervais show or something like that. Let's just try one more. Let's Okay, now we're onto the red tapestry. This one looks like... Danger happened. There was a battle. Some kind of evil came. Let's see if my prediction holds true here. The last section tells about the decline of the guilds. Uh-huh. Called it. Is that it? There's a nope. third shadow gathering. That's strange. The end is completely torn off. Oh, no. It's almost as if the future is unwritten, guys. As in, there's no such thing as fate except for the fate we make for ourselves little back to the future in there for you. All right, here are some other dudes in robes. I'm assuming they're the older and wiser than me. All pleased with her. You have heard the findings of this council, Dame Hetcho. Have you anything to say in your own defense? My elders, my actions speak for themselves. This reckless defiance is intolerable. Everybody's like obscured in these robes. Sun might be turned against us. His talent is awakening, and the power is very strong in him. We dare not desert him now. A stubborn old fool. Is this the loom? I'm like barely paying attention. They are arguing about somebody who has great power. I assume it's me. Petro. I am grieved to see your many years of service end in such disgrace. My destiny is yours to weave. Hetchel, the fabric of your life has been woven by your own choices. Gaze once more upon the great loom. If you would know your <laughs> ultimate destiny. I want to talk this way in a meeting sometime. Destiny. Where somebody's it's like, well, I think, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, gaze upon the report of... Jay, for it will tell you your future endeavors. <laughs> like it's so dramatic. Whoa, whoa! A swan's egg. He morphed. He morphed Something is her into a swan. That draft has never failed before. That's not how you solve arguments. You don't turn people into birds. Outside. What kind of wild west magic land are we in? This is the work of that demon boy. We should kill him. Everyone's turning into birds. What's Your happening? They're all turning into birds. <laughs> what? They're like, they're, they're off battling. Okay. I've never seen a meeting go so bad that everybody fled in bird form. Just for the record, most gathering of elders or CEO board meetings or even just like, you know, study groups in university... They don't usually take such a bad turn that people flee in bird form. Uh, so, you know, that's how you know a meeting has kind of gone off the rails. When people are transfigurating into other species and then fleeing works. rapidly. Okay, we got a little, our little staff here. So, this is where it we can actually help. It might help to point play first. stuff. Let's see if we can do something here. Uh, let's just play a few random notes. See what happens. Hmm. Nothing. I guess that isn't a draw. <laughs> Nothing. Well, okay, well, you can already see the main game mechanic here. I, I'm really excited for this, by the way. I, I might not have played up my excitement for this, but the idea that you have, you know, these eight notes or whatever that you learn, and you play them in different orders, and the order you play them initiates a spell, I think that's really cool. And the coolest thing is, you know, if you play spells in reverse, they can have the opposite effect. Such a unique, interesting gameplay mechanic. I've never heard of anything like that, and I really like that idea. I really, really, really like it. I, I can't put my finger exactly on why. Uh, oh, should I have been paying attention to this? Oh, crap. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's trying to open. Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. Maybe. Can I do this again? E. Pay attention, guys. C. E. D. Okay, E C E D. Got it. The egg. It's trying to. Open. E C 
E D. Go, go, gadget, whatever. Go, go, gadget, egg. Man, we should be writing this down. Uh, ooh, there's my boy. What's happening? The whole village has flown away without us. From the moment you came into this world, what is happening? Bombing, great and terrible things have been happening. The elders hoped that your birth was the cause of it. Why would the elders want to get rid of me? I'm such an awful weaver that they never even let me study with the others. They fear you, Bobbin. When the swan arrived, Bobbin. they were already trying to weave the same draft on you that they had worked on me. But the draft turned against them. It means only one thing, that the pattern is failing of its own accord. No, can't it be stopped? I wonder if we could turn her back into an egg by playing that draft, the four musical notes in reverse. <laughs> that would be, oh, what a dick move that would be. Yeah, back into egg form you go. Escape. Escape? To where? I don't know. But if we are to survive, we must find out where that flock has flown and join them if we can. Follow the swans. All right, her, she's still kind of quacking away, but she's not really talking. <laughs> Good. You won't be able to weave very much with it at first, but as you practice, its true power will be revealed to you. Gotcha. Got to learn how to use this magic staff. It's time to leave this island, Loom Child. Your destiny lies beyond the sunset, across the sea. Mother Hetchel, where are you going? I gotta say, everybody's like hanging around. Whoa, where is she going? She's like open up a, a rip in space time. Everyone's hanging out in their bathrobes. They're hooded. They all sound old. It kind of feels like this is a magical tale, like a retirement island. Keep calling me Loom Child. Loom Child. Let me anywhere near a loom. This is a loom, I think. We could make a pretty badass sweater if we spend some time with the loom here. Uh, e C E. D. Let's just see what happens here. Anything? Whoa! Well, that didn't work. Okay. Well, <laughs> I thought it was gonna do something. I guess not. Okay. Let's let's head back out of the tent. I think we've done all the damage we can do here. Let's continue to explore the magical world of Loom. We got our sweet walking stick, which I don't know. How does this walking stick actually make noises? It it's like I what what what, what am I doing? Like touching the stick at different points, and it's kind of like humming along, making noises. I guess. I mean, it's a magic stick. Do we really need to dissect how it works? It's uh, quote unquote magic. One interesting thing for this game is if you play this on expert, it doesn't show the musical notes uh, on the stick, or I think actually it still shows the notes at the bottom because you have to click on something. But basically, when you hear a new spell on easy mode, it will show me where what notes are being played, so then I just copy it. But on expert mode, you actually have to listen because it won't show you. You just have to sort of listen to the notes and figure out what's being played. Um, as someone who's non-musical in any capacity, that sounds brutal, but it also sounds totally awesome. That's, you know, if you were so musically inclined, that would be pretty neat. And it's kind of an interesting way to learn what the different musical notes are. Because you could learn... Uh, what is it? Eight notes. Even if you were like me, you were musically, you know, very challenged. Uh, so yeah, kind of, kind of all around. I'm fascinated by by the concept behind this game. In in almost typical Lucas Arts fashion, they have not failed to impress. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, we stumbled upon what looks to be the town witch's cave or whatever. I don't know. You know what? What also is interesting is that 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 little gathering of elders there. Everyone seemed elderly. They were saying how I was born. Who are my parents? Because I didn't spot anyone who could be the correct age for me. Oh, wait. G, D, D, E. Do I even know how to play Gs? That thread's too high for me. Nope. <laughs> so that doesn't help me at all. Uh, maybe I can learn how to play Gs? That's the book of patterns. I already know what's in it. Yeah, okay. Okay. He's still talking. He's, his head was like bobbing along for a long period after after most people would kind of finish talking. Grass green. I hate that color. All right, what else can we what else can we mess around with in here? Here's a pot, the dye pot. Okay, D D 
C D. D D C D. Remember that, guys. We somebody should be writing this down. I hope I hope somebody out there is. I don't know. I'm relying on my memory, which is horrible. D D. By the power of D D C and D, I command you do something. Magic is occurring. They're turning green. All right. What if we did D C D D? By the power of DCDD, I command you to change yet again. Oh, shit, it works. <laughs> there. Looks much better in white. <laughs> oh, wait, can we turn this one? Let's turn this one back then. All right, DCDD. -D. Here we go. This would be a really convenient staff to have. Let's go around changing the color of everyone's clothes. <laughs> there. Looks much better in white. All right. Was was there any point to that? Oh, yo. We still got some green fabrics up here. Let's change these too. Why not? So I'm just in here messing around. I don't know why I'm doing this, but it feels like I should. This feels correct. There. Looks much better in white. Okay. Is there anything else we can make white? I guess my guy, he really doesn't like green, it turns out. Um... So, okay, well, we've done all the damage we can do in here. Let's get the hell out of here. Somebody's going to come home and be like, Oh my god, my green blankets! Everything's been bleached! And I'm just scurrying across the the, the tail end of the village, like, ha ha. Like, <laughs> in some ways, it's the lamest prank ever. It's like, hey, I uh, broke into your house and changed the color of your blankets. How do you like them apples? Anyway, okay, let, forget about the village. It's boring. It bores me. Let's see what's going on down at the pier over here. Now, the original version of this game, in the box that the game came in, you got a 30-minute audio cassette tape that told the backstory of Loom. I always thought it was cool when old games did that. What is this, a clam? Can we do anything to the birds? Can we change their color? Oh, man, that would be amazing. Hold on. Uh, what was it? D-D-C-D. Just out of curiosity, can we morph you green? <laughs> Come on, do it. Make him green. Uh, well, that did. Uh, disappointing. <laughs> but I always thought it was cool when, like, uh, oh wait, let's try to open this. What was it again? E C E D. I always thought it was cool when games kind of package something along with them. Like I think the original Leisure Suit Larry had like a cocktail napkin in the in the box or whatever. I was thinking about this when I was getting ready for this game. Hey, hey, no, no, don't, don't you kill the clam. No, you're eating it. No, clam, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for you to open up to your doom. Oh, we're just watching this happen. We're just watching this happen. I don't think there's anything we can do here. Okay, sorry, buddy. Uh, I'm I'm the, the the bringer of death and doom and destruction. I played a, a little ditty that, that got y'all excited to open you up and just opened you up to doom. Anyway, all right, let's let's see let's see what more damage we can do. We're we're staining people's sheets, we're we're dooming clams to their death. What what else could we possibly do? Uh we're we're kind of just doing random things. I don't know how any of this is supposed to help us with our quest. It's not like at the end they'll be like, "Oh, you vanquished the evil clam and those sheets of green were dispatched white. You are truly the hero of all time." It's like I'm just walking around doing stuff. This does not feel very heroic. Oh my god, what is this? It is an a weird a weird creepy owl, guys. I think it's looking at us. Actually, no, it doesn't notice. What the hell is this? There's totally something in there. What is this? I feel like we have to investigate this. We have to figure out what's going on. What is this guy? What is this guy? Thorns. Ouch. Oh, a little rabbit. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we killed a clam and we led to a rabbit's death. Um, Is is the owl going to eat him or? Well, he's, he's just gone. He's just gone. Okay, what's what's going on in here? What's going on in this hole? There's an owl in there. All right, dude, give me the rabbit, and I won't, I won't open you up like an egg. Another owl. Two owls. Oops. 
Uh, didn't mean to do that. I thought we could click on that hole. Guess not. So we're seeing a bunch of owls in here. Have a, having a hoot of a time. <laughs> anyway, before I get too sidetracked, the whole idea of games packaging kind of neat little extras. Oh, so many owls in these. Ones. I guess they do it a lot these days with like collector's editions and stuff. But when I first thought of it, I was kind of like, oh man, the good old days used to get like little little tidbits and stuff in uh, in your in your game boxes, and it was so cool. They don't do it anymore. And they kind of do and they kind of don't. Fun, I don't know. Man. I mean, definitely games are getting away from the physical, uh, the sort of physical medium. You know, there's way more games you just purely download these days. So, uh... There's an owl in there. Wait, what am I doing? I'm mean, just summoning owls? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, whole cassette tape on the backstory of this game. I think that's kind of cool. It'd be cool to buy a game back in the day and get like a CD or discs and a cassette tape. Adds to the There's depth of the game. Okay, I know I'm supposed to do something with these owls, but I cannot figure it out. They're they're like all over the place. This place, this forest is littered with owls. I'm supposed to learn something from them. Okay, I think I thought this would unlock some new musical note, but I think when you click on the owls, it just is C C C C, which apparently is the light draft. I guess it lights things up. So okay, whatever. Let's go see who's buried here for funsies. Check out the grave. Destiny shall draw the lightning down from heaven. Roll its thunder far across the Man, who puts riddles on their tombstone? I wait upon the shore of wonder. On the day the sky is opened and the tree is split asunder. So I think this is your mother. Um, but I'm noticing the dates here. We're in the year 7900. Dear God. So in the year 7900, the the humans will walk open. around fully cloaked, commanding the power of music. Owls will still be a thing. We're going to have sweet robes. wonder if I can use that spell on myself to, like, turn my robes green. Because I, I dyed all my robes, uh, all the, the fabrics in my little hut uh, white there. Uh, I have yet to encounter anyone else in town, by the way. The elders all turned into geese or swans or whatever and fled. And I don't think anyone else populated this town. This is a very, this is like, you're talking, you want to talk about post apocalyptic futures. Imagine one where literally there was like eight people left in the world. Your only friends, your only family, only people you've ever known. And they all turned into like swans and fled. And all you were left with was the power of, ma of, of music. That, that is the post apocalyptic future, my friends. Yo, let's uh, let's cast something on the sky here, man. Let's open up the sky. E C E D. By the power of E, the C, the E, and the D, I command you to open. What does the sky opening even mean? I think we're creating a black hole vortex. It's gonna wipe out all life as we know it. Uh, we zapped a tree. Did I get hit in that? I was right near the tree, man. Uh, no, the trees floating over to the pier, or is it, it looks like it's swimming, <laughs> like it's fleeing, it's like, oh god, they, the sky attacked me, forget this, I'm out of here, uh, okay, oh, that clam is all eaten, am I still around, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that was a close one. Fun. Okay, pro tip, don't cast that spell on the sky unless you want to get full-on electrocuted. I wonder if we did it again, what would happen? E, C, E, and D commands you. And... Perhaps I shouldn't try that again. No, he doesn't want to do it. Okay, just one, one more thing. E, C, E, D. So D, E, C, E. What happens if we tell the sky to close? By the power of me, close. Seems to close by itself. Oh, okay. So I guess when there's no lightning, the sky is considered closed by whizzical standards. Uh, okay. So let's head back to the old village. I feel like we're kind of walking in circles here. Now this this is this is as I said one of these no stuck no die games. So. Um, I'm playing through with the help of a little bit of a guide here, but even if I wasn't, 
given enough time, the idea is I would eventually solve all these puzzles because there's no way to die and there's no way to get stuck. This is kind of this is kind of like the old uh, or not the old, but the the new kind of philosophy in Telltale games. So I feel like I talk about this every time I play an adventure game, but I'll mention it just one more time. In the old Sierra games, wait, keep going with the light. There we go. In the old Sierra games, you could miss an object that you were supposed to pick up on the first screen, and you could get halfway through the game and just be plumb stuck, and there's no way to get through. Games, LucasArts games were pretty uh, forgiving when it came to that. They did not have that mechanic. And although you could die in LucasArts games, uh, in many, uh, there was some limitation on it, where death was far more forgiving than like a Sierra game where you would just die randomly. So, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about that, ultimately? Like, in some ways, I really like the LucasArts games when I want to sort of play more casually. But I kind of also appreciate the Sierra way. Like, it's not that I'd want every adventure game to be so unforgiving as the Sierra games, but they they really are a little more hardcore. So, I don't know. Like, there's very few Sierra adventure games I ever beat by myself, by the way. Like, they're just so hard. But... For anyone who actually has beaten a real Sierra game, what do you think? Do you, do you prefer the challenge of a Sierra game over a LucasArts game? I don't know. Anyway, we have revealed this tent. I keep, I keep blathering on, on, on these uh, tangents here. Talk about the game more. We're in a tent. Okay, there's a pile of gold, which I'm totally uninterested in, which makes no sense, and a pile of sticks. Let's see what we can do with this stuff here. So we have some straw. Don't people ever clean up after themselves? And a spinning wheel. Is this like... Wasn't there like a, a fairy tale where like somebody turned sticks into gold? Like, I want to say Rumpelstiltskin, but is that incorrect? Oh, wait, hold on. D E D C. The hell is that? Okay, let's just try it. D E D C. Does that do anything? And no. No, no, that's not right. Okay, hold on. D, E, D, C. We better be able to make some mad gold out of this. I hope this works. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa. Yo, now there's one spell I wouldn't mind knowing. How to turn sticks into gold. Oh, we just learned F. Let's just say we got a little left up in here. Things got F'd, guys. Went into a tent and learned an, a new F in note. Uh, that's about all I got. That that's the limit of my 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 com my improv comedy skills. Three, you get three jokes, guys. That's that's all I got in me. Now can we go here? What was the the thing that we needed to know with F? Oh shoot! It's still dripping. What <laughs> it's, it's like already gone. Oh that that's oh here we go. Oh no, it was G G D D E. I feel like if you were not writing these down, you'd need to come up with, like, a uh, little mnemonics. Like, goddamn, damn elves for GDDE or something. Or I don't know how else you can remember these. Because it's starting to get, like, a lot. Okay. So, is there anything else? Wait, we, we didn't try and go in this tent. Just, I mean, it looks closed. Looks closed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's it's being, like, shielded by a blanket. And he's like, oh, well, you know, it's uh, it's that tent is locked. Can't go in there. But OK, well, I guess we're done with these tents. I, I still can't get over how the elders tent was like a huge temple underneath. That is a sweet tent. Reminds me of like the Harry Potter tent in Deathly Hallows, where it was like a little tent. But you go inside and it was like a big palace. Uh, I guess it's kind of like isn't a Doctor Who TARDIS like that. I, I was never a Doctor Who fan. But I think there's like a, a word for that. It showed up in Star Trek Enterprise as well, where like the Sulaban ships were small little spheres, but you go inside and it's like a big ship inside. I don't know. Uh, can we take this thing? Uh, maybe we should like close this up. What do you think? Was it E C E D? So D E C E. Let's just shut this little clam here. And. Boom. Well, I mean, the clam's dead, so there was really no point, but I, I, I feel better doing that. I wonder what the point of that even was. I was supposed to do it. Is it just like I'm like getting off the island? And I'm like, yeah, screw all clams. Whoa. Well, OK, I guess we're uh, 
going in the water here. My guy can swim. I feel like uh, the only thing left to do is ride a log. Yeah, let's ride this log on out of here. I don't know much about seafaring, but I don't think just taking a log out on the open waters is a very good idea. Maybe it is. I don't know. Anyone out there watching this ever escape the desert island? <laughs> you got to figure the crossover in, in this universe, in this world of the number of people who's, who've ever escaped the desert island uh, on like a raft and the number of people watching YouTube. There's probably very little overlap, very little chance that they would actually be watching this video. But, you know, hey, maybe you did. I don't know. I, I don't know how many people have escaped desert islands in this world. Probably only like a couple ever. I'm talking about real escape, not like, you know, if Tom Hanks is watching this video because he was in uh, Castaway. Um, okay, so this looks completely calm and safe. I'm sure we can just scoot right by this. I wonder if I can die here. I kind of don't want to risk it because I haven't been saving my game and I, I honestly don't know how. But yeah, okay, let, let's actually try to, to deal with this. Okay, so we're going to do something with this. Um, well, no, don't go in it, you idiot. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we... I'm trying to click on it so I can cast a spell. There we go. Okay, now. Um, can we do close? D-E. It might help to point at something first. What? I have it selected. Okay, fine. If you kill yourself, I'm not responsible. I swear, you better not kill yourself. Okay. Let's try, let's try and close this baby up. D-E-C-E. -E. Shut your mouth. Go away. If this, if uh, like a strong wind blows that thing a little to the east, my guy's no dead. Didn't do anything. There must be some way I can what is this? It looks like a, just like, <laughs> look at the animations. <laughs> it's very static. It's like just up here it's twirling, but this is just completely static. Okay, what is this thing? Oh, oh, here we go. D E F D E F C. I think that's close. It's enough. like a rapper noise. Uh, how about this? Sea fed. We're gonna go ahead and reverse y'all. If that is your natural symphony tune, listen to the sweet sounds of my music staff and shut your mouth. All right, that, that seems to solve our problem. I mean, I guess when you're riding a log in the high seas, it's under normal circumstances pretty unsafe unless you got like a mad crazy magical wand that is able to harness the power of music then then i guess you're okay oh we weren't escaping a desert island we were going to a desert island all right we somehow that let us learn the musical note g all right this is this is the island of g what is this a starfish <laughs> I'd play you a song, but I can't I can't select you. The other thing that makes these LucasArts games a little easier than Sierra games is if you can't click on something, you know it's not useful or relevant. But in Sierra games, you never knew. You'd have to just type in, look at rock, look at starfish. And then you'd be back here, you're like, what the hell are these things? Look at algae, and it would say, I don't know what algae is. Look at flowers, and be like, I don't know what flowers are. And you'd have to like try and type in the, oh, key phrase. Okay, I'm just walking off into the horizon. Guess we're going this way. Looks like the Wizard of Oz city is back there. What is it, Emerald City or whatever? We're going to encounter a cowardly lion or something. Let's find out. This is a very nice forest. I, I, You know what? I dig these graphics. Whoa, whoa. What is happening? What, what are these people? Was that like the worst oh, invisibility knows? spell ever? Yeah. Well, well. Looks like a scrawny runt trying to sneak into our flock. Sneak? You call that sneak? That person looks like Hitler. The person who's talking right now. They got a little Hitler Thought mustache. You were going to fleece some shepherds, did you? Maybe we ought to take the shears to you instead. <laughs> got some rowdy Scots and a uh, shepherd Hitler going on here. I'm looking for a flock of swans. Swans? Swans? Do you know? Birds. Oh, swan. Of course. <laughs> what is what is swan swan slang for? Everybody like prostitutes? Like he had to clarify, swan. no birds, like bird swans. Next, next, you'll be telling us you're some sort of wizard off to fly away with. I guess Hitler's a female, given the voice. Wizard, wizard. You wouldn't happen to be the great wizard that Fleece was telling us about, would you know? 
Fleece? He is sort of dressed like a wizard. I don't know. <laughs> dressed like a wizard Doesn't slash retired person who just woke up and is still either. in their pajamas. <laughs> I say we don't let him buy until we know for sure. Come on, you know what's funny? Wizard. Wizards in like Let's RPGs and video games, we're all, are, they're all kind of old. Like you never see young wizards. They're always really old with like long beards and they're in robes. Maybe a uh, wizarding robe is not necessarily like a wizarding thing. It's kind of like, hey, you know, I'm in my pajamas. I got my slippers on and my house coat and, uh, you know, I'm old, so I don't care. I'm in the Middle Earth. I'm just going to go out and venturing in this and to hell with it. I'm, I'm past the point of caring. So, yeah, maybe it literally is, is like Gandalf is in a bathrobe for the whole Hobbit or whatever. Let's talk to these shepherds. I sure wish I knew a draft that would work on shepherds. What, what can we do that would scare shepherds? Okay, we know a couple of drafts here. Let's think, of, let's think this through, guys. How about light? We're going to blind these bitches. Behold the power and the glory of light. Well, that draft didn't seem to do much good. <laughs> and they're all just standing there. Okay, okay, go ahead. Try another one. Try another one. How about, uh, what was it, Death Sea? Suck them up in a whirlwind. Let's do it. Uh, nothing. Well, that draft didn't seem to do much good. All right, to hell with you guys. You bore me. They're like, hey, we're not done picking on you. I'm like, see ya. Come on, lads. He's had enough. Let him go. Some kind of wizard, eh? Don't trip on your robe, little wizard. Get on your What a bunch of dicks. To use. Back to work. We need to... We need to figure out the... Wait. G-E... Wait, wait, wait. G-E-E-C. Hold on here. Hold on here. Did you guys just reveal your secrets to me, G... It might help to point oh, out. I want to turn invisible now. Just wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, click on yourself. Oh, you can't. G E E C. Okay, don't forget that one. That will help us turn invisible. You bullies just made a classic tactical blunder. Never reveal your your spells in front of another wizard. This totally is Emerald City. Where's Dorothy? Where's Dorothy and the wizard? I have one wish. It's to be a, be a real person. To have a heart. Okay. Um, I wish I had some of that gold. Why didn't I take any gold? Although I guess actually if he knows how to turn sticks into gold, what the hell does it matter? That's kind of cool, the transparency effect there. It's it's not like super good, but it's for its time, that's, that's not bad. Huh. Uh, where the hell am I going, by the way? There's people and things happening, but... How do I get to anything? These look like two kind of like medieval superheroes. Like, look at this guy. This could be like ancient Green Lantern. Let's see if we can click on him. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Cast invisibility or something on their conversation. Let's just listen. I can barely hear what they're saying. What are they saying? What are they saying? Trust your excellency is pleased with our progress. That all depends. On how far this sphere can help me see. These look like Venture Brother villains. You guys ever see that show, Venture Brothers? If not, you're missing out, man. Only six hours, but I expressly requested eight. Like they look like ridiculous supervillains from the 1950s cartoons. It's possible to accurately predict how well this sphere will perform. I need at least eight hours. Eight hours, Master Crucible. See to it. <laughs> Okay. Hey, if I had a sphere that saw one hour into the future, I'd be pretty damn impressed. I need at least eight hours, Master Crucible. Seems like he's getting pretty demanding there with your uh, time-seeing orbs. What's going on in that tower up there? Jesus. Um, Looks like a dance party that I was not invited to. Yo, well, let's just make it not happen. G-E-E-C. That means that's a wizard for goodbye, buddy. You're going invisible. Hmm. Uh, what a useless spell. Didn't do anything. One way to find out. Didn't seem to do very much. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, okay, what's over here? Let's just wander around. W where am I? This is like some kind of like golden palace resort thing here. W we've stumbled onto a, uh, a, a medieval uh, Emerald City all-inclusive. We got... 
our like beach area. We, let's find the buffet. That's that's what I want to do. I want to pig out on some uh, some food here. Uh, where we wait? Where are we supposed to go now? That's one thing that definitely is common among the Sierra and the LucasArts games. The sort of where the hell do I go next thing that occasionally happens. Okay, what is what's going on over here? Can I use the orb to look ahead one hour and see what I'm supposed to do in this game? That would actually be an interesting mechanic. Crystal. A glass bell. I wonder what will happen if... If I shake it? What the... Whoa, I just, like, totally teleported up here. I'm dizzy. Uh, also invisible. Cuts quite a figure, doesn't he? I don't doubt the crucible is getting tired of bowing and... Why would the clerics want a scrying sphere anyway? I thought they didn't believe in the future. Yeah, your guess is as lucid as mine, Flute. The <laughs> appears to think that they're up to no good again. It's interesting then how these guys all have half hoods. Tall. Like, I come from an island where people wear their hoods fully on, and this is like a half hood island. Also, these guys, like, I'm not trying to stereotype here, but do they strike you as like a little effeminate? Um, which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's kind of funny. Um, okay. What should we cast on these guys? We gotta cast something. We gotta try. Uh, let's try and make them invisible too. Let's have a whole invisible party. I feel like that's the way this thing is going. They've been pumping and grinding on this scythe for all day. Gotta give them the power of invisibility. That would let them take a long lunch break. Glad I'm already invisible. Not only did that not work, they didn't even notice. They're like, you sparkled there for quite a while, but whatever. What is this scythe? D, F, A, oh, we can't play it yet. F. That's De faff. Even sharper than a weaver's spindle. De faff, okay. Um, well, I guess we, we, <laughs> we're doing a lot of, like, skulking around and listening in on people's conversations. And how did they not notice that happening right behind them? Giant solar energy thing takes someone from above to below. <laughs> These aren't the most observant workers. Um, okay. Okay, you know what? Let's try and look at this orb here. We got to be able to we got we got to be able to figure this out somehow. Wait. Take 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 me to the orb. No, no. Yes. You what? <laughs> this is so frustrating. Okay, there actually is a bell over here. So, yo. My bad, I didn't realize that we should be going down here. Why are they, like, sharpening a scythe just at the top of, like, a crystal tower just randomly? There we go. Now we're near the orb. Let's see what this thing has to say. Show me your mysteries, Sphere. Reveal them. Show me what happens in one hour. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> F. C. C. F. Okay, hold on. I just said, wouldn't it be cool if I looked in this sphere and I figured out what I should do, like what I should do in the next like half hour or whatever. And it literally showed me mind blown. That's a mind blow moment. That is exactly what I wanted to see. That's so cool. Okay. FCCF is what I got to do. I wonder, is it going to show me anything else? I wonder how many things it could actually show me. This is so cool. Oh, wow. It's like giving you a preview of later in the game. Wow. That's so cool, guys. That's neat. Oh, man. LucasArts, man. I mean, okay, this game, this game, it, it has its, it has its cons. It's, it's not, it's not a perfect game. But I am color me impressed by both. I love the whole mechanic of having to learn these four note spells and being able to play them in forward and reverse can reverse them. I mean, that just makes total sense. And it's such an interesting mechanic. And just there looking into the sphere and being like, oh, man, it'd be so cool if it showed me what I needed to do. And it did. Oh, so cool. I mean, am I making too big of a deal out of this? I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it, this could have happened in any game, but I feel like what kind of game do you encounter where you see that? And it's so cool. The idea of like seeing yourself in the future already doing something and you know where I'm going, where I'm going right now. I'm going to scare those those dick shepherds because now I know the spell man F C C F. This stands for 
fear is coming to crash your fun. Fear is coming to crash your fun, boys. And it's coming for those those dick shepherds, the three shepherds and Hitler, Lady Hitler. They're all hanging out there. They think they're so cool. They made fun of my robes. Well, guess what? Hey, nope. Go in there. There we go. Guess what? My robes are sweet, and I don't care what you say. I'm going to scare the crap out of you. Fear's coming to crash your fun, boys. F-C-C-F. Don't forget it. Do not forget it. If I forget, it'd be such an annoying walk to go back and have to look at that sphere again. Wow. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to wrap this game up in a moment, but I just want to like... We, we got to take advantage of the fact that we saw the future. We know what to do. I love time travel stuff. Uh, it's just... <laughs> I love time travel stuff, and I love future stuff. And now, oh yeah, you think it's so funny? You think it's funny harassing me? Well, guess what I've seen in the future, bitch. And guess what's in your future? It's called fear. So here we go, boys. F, C, C, F. And we know it's going to work because we've already seen it in the sphere. Boom! Blue magical dust makes you feel scared on the inside. Oh, shoot. <laughs> they really bailed on that one. Oh, yeah. My guy's like nodding. He's like feeling so badass. Oh, man. If you could turn into a dragon randomly, I feel like that would solve a lot of problems in your day to day life. You just get out of so much. Like you get pulled over for a speeding ticket, you just morph into a dragon. That cop's not arresting you or giving you a ticket. Um, sheep. Sheep. We've made it to sheep. Oh, and like a, a sad shepherd. If this guy harasses us, we're totally dragifying him. Oh, he's sleeping. I wonder if we can, like, wake him up and stuff. Can we do stuff to his sheep? Can we terrorize the sheep? It's so cruel, but I wonder. Um, anyway, I should start wrapping this up because we've been, we've been playing this for quite a while. I feel like, you know, I got a pretty good impression of what this game is about That's and so on. And, uh, so yeah, so my scared. thoughts here. What have we learned here today, guys? I think we have learned that the power of music compels you. And that by learning a few little ditties, you might actually be able to harness the power of the universe itself. Striking down trees, destroying clams, making rabbits, uh, owl meals, and also morphing into a dragon and seeing the future. Which seem like probably the more useful things. Oh, and, and you can turn sticks into gold. So if you don't know how to play a musical instrument like me, you might want to get on it. Because apparently music has a lot of power harnessed within it. Uh, pros and cons of this game. I mean, I have just finished ranting about how cool I think the mechanics of this game are. The, 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 the musical mechanics, the time travel vision mechanic we just saw. I mean, this is, this is a very neat and unique game. If you've never played this before, you know, I, I've kind of just sort of dipped my toes in here. There's a lot of games still left to explore. I would recommend going and checking it out. Um, you know, the cons are it isn't your typical LucasArts adventure. So if you really like the sort of verb mechanic... Pardon me, the, the verb mechanic system where you, uh, you know, click on like open or take or give or whatever. If you like that system more, you may not like this. But as far as like old school adventure games go, it, I mean, th again, it's, it's hard to think of one that is so unique. And, and I really dig it. I really do dig it. Uh, and so I'm a huge fan of what they were trying to do here. And this this world is just so cool. It's fun to explore. The graphics are beautiful. Guys, is this a game you must play before you die? I hesitate to say you must, as in you definitely must, but I would say you probably should. I would say this is a game that definitely it stands out as being a unique adventure game. And if you like adventure games at all, I think you're going to find something a little interesting here. So yeah, I, I, I'm not going to get much farther in the game because uh, I, I already understand the gist of it here and I don't want to spoil it for you. But, oh, there's an invisible shepherd there. He might not like me hanging around with his sheep in here. But anyway, if you get a chance, check it out. I think right now it is $1.49 on Good Old Games, or it was um, when I got it. I think its regular price is $4.99. So, hey, we've met someone. That's fun. We've made a friend. I wonder if she'll be our love interest. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. Do you agree with me? I don't know. Am I correct here? Are you, do you think I'm, like, going a little nuts over a game that really doesn't deserve it? I mean, I don't think I am, but hey, maybe I am. Uh, always happy to hear your guys' thoughts on these games. <laughs> Whoa, a dragon is stealing sheep. This game just gets cooler. 
Guys, if you've enjoyed watching me stumble my way around the world of Loom, go ahead and give this video a like and or subscribe to the channel. I will be back in a couple days in my ongoing quest to play through the book 1001 Video Games Before I Die. And so I'll be back with a new video and a new game, and you don't want to miss out on that. So until next time, my friends, I will be here trying to save the sheep from the evil black dragon. And take care of yourselves. Peace. We'll deliver the sheep to the clerics if we can. But Never we trust a trust cleric. Them. I suppose fighting the dragon will be out of the question. Okay, hold on. It says click them from left to right. Okay. Well, let's try this. Two, three, four. There's an owl in there. Mm hmm. What do I do here? What the fuck?